Hey everyone, it's Joe Waxman, and I'm back with another video. Today, I want to talk about the 12th and final sign of the zodiac, Pisces, the fish. It's, the, it's number 12. So first thing, I want to look at what number 12 signifies. And let's just get a couple images in mind before I start talking about all the significations. So this is the first one uh, we can look at. This is a dodecahedron, which is fascinating because it's um, we're getting into like, um, you know, the three dimensional objects and we can count the sides, you know, one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So there's 12, uh, 12, 12 sides. But what's really interesting is that each one is a, um, it's made up of pentagons. So five-sided figures. So how does that, I mean, that's really in, an interesting conundrum, 12 and five, um, five times 12 is 60. So what is that? I don't know. I mean, you know, what, what do you, what do you want to make of that? I don't really, I don't really have anything to say about it. Um, it's just fascinating. I know that uh, 12 breaks down we break down the numbers of 12, it's two and six, right? Two times six is 12 and, and three and four. So two, three, four, and six. And here we have a, a five as a significant uh, number dealing with um, the three-dimensional 12-sided figure. So just something to, to ponder, to reflect upon. Maybe you'll come up with some, some interesting answers. Um, if you do and you wanna share, you feel free to write them in the comments. Um, numbers are a fascinating thing to, to play with, to look at. So here is a dodecagon. So that was a dodecahedron. This is a dodecagon, a uh, 12-sided figure. And we're almost getting into a circle here, but, you know, 12, 12 sides. And it's inside, there's, a, you know, an interesting, uh, like a 12-pointed 12, 12, uh, star, if you will. It's not a continuous star, but it, it's a star-like figure. Um, and here we have a 12 pointed star. Really interesting, completely symmetrical. Um, you know, easily divisible because it's, it's you know, all the, all the um, points have a, a direct polarity point. We don't see that when we have the prime numbers, like number 11, the 11 sided star. It's not, we don't have the opposition, the oppositional points. It's, it's a little slightly different, but this is what a 12 sided star looks like. So those are the three figures that I uh, chose to represent uh, Pisces. But um, let's just talk about Pisces. Uh, it's number 12, it's mutable water. So uh, moving water, like I have in the background here, um, waves, um, it's ruled by Jupiter and Neptune. Neptune is the more modern ruler. Um, and the way I differentiate, between the two is that um, I like to think of Jupiter as the actual physical ruler of Pisces, like in representing, like if we need to figure out what, um, you know, what Jupiter is, is um, what uh, Pisces is doing, um, then we look to Jupiter for more of the physical representation here on Earth. Neptune would be more of a spiritual energetic representation. Um, so I've gone over that um before but just that's just a basic uh differentiation so like if you want to look at how the how the how the energy is manifesting in real life i would look to jupiter um if you want to look to more like how the person might be feeling internally the neptune might represent jupiter on that level um energetic you know um so, something that you can't touch uh touch taste or feel you know, if you get what i mean Neptune, what I'm referring to. Um, and it's the third and final water sign. And it's the final sign of the whole zodiac, number 12. Um, some, some significations of number 12 are the 12 stations of the cross, which is a Christian thing. Um, I don't even know what they are. I just know that that's one of the things. Uh, 12 months in a year, uh, 12 zodiacs, obviously, 12 Chinese zodiacs. Um, and the Chinese have two different uh, differentiations. They have the um, 
10 heavenly stems and 12 earthly branches. So they break it down. There's two different cycles. The 10 heavenly stems are um, the five transformations times two. So the five transformations, which are different than the four elements of the Western Zodiac, the five transformations are um, metal, water, tree, fire, and earth. So there's five. And then the 10 heavenly stems come in because of yin and yang, which again is um, uh, Eastern um, uh, philosophical um, dialectic. It's called the dialectic, you know, dividing everything into two polarities. Uh, so then you have two polarities of the five. So like yang metal, yin metal, yang water, yin water. And, that, and then because two times five, then you get 10. So that's the 10 heavenly stems. The 12 earthly branches are a further differentiation of that. Just throwing that out there. I did study uh, four pillars astrology, uh, Chinese astrology. There's 12 disciples of Jesus, 12 inches to a foot. And then again, uh, number 12 breaks down into two times six or three times four. So you get the two, three, four, and six. Those are the multiples, the factors of, um, of number 12. Um, and so Pisces is represented by two fish uh, swimming in opposite directions, tied with a rope often. You'll see that. And that's very much the yin and yang symbol, the harmony. I mean, we get the similar thing with cancer, you know, again, this thing. Um, and it's just showing a, a natural polarity, a yin yang type relationship. Um, yeah. And also, I mean, there's the, um, you know, what is, one of the dual signs, I guess you could say, in astrology. I think all the signs are dual, essentially, but um, I guess Pisces is more representative of a duality, dual nature. Um, water and the ocean are naturally uh, associated with Pisces because of fish, right? I tend to think of Pisces as the ocean because the ocean is the final um, repository of depository of all the water in the world. Um, unlike, you know, rivers and lakes, those are sort of uh, temporary, um, you know, the, the, all the water fine, inevitably flows into the ocean, or at least that's the, where all the, the, the mass of the water is. And Pisces being the final sign, the final water sign, um, the ocean, is naturally um, associated. For me, I associate the ocean with, with Pisces. Also Neptune ruling, um, being the co ruler of Pisces, Neptune is the god of the ocean. So there's that association as well, right? And then the ocean is so deep and so vast, things can naturally get lost in the ocean. So naturally we have this correlation of loss in the ocean. And that's how I like to differentiate between something like Scorpio and Pisces, the difference there where um, in Scorpio, we can get lost, but then we can find ourselves again. In Pisces, we can get lost and just stay lost, right? There's much more um, the trouble with Pisces is, is kind of like just a complete and total loss in Pisces. Whereas with Scorpio, there's the possibility of redemption. It's the death and rebirth. Whereas Pisces, we don't consider it the death, it's just loss. It's because death almost has a, the opposite connotation of rebirth. But with Pisces, it's not a death, it's, it's just a complete loss. It's, it's not even, it's, it's almost like beyond death. It's like we've already died and we're just, we've accepted that we're dead. We're just floating in the ocean, just being lost forever and ever, right? <laughs> I mean... There's that natural connection with the just complete and utter and total loss in Pisces. Um, with the fish, we also have the, the connotation, the association of sleep, right? Because um, well, naturally you have sleeping with the fishes. I mean, that's a, you know, a colloquial expression of uh, not a very nice one of being dead, you know, like being dumped in the ocean, but um, um, when, uh, I mean, fish swim in schools and in a school, you don't really, there's no real independence. I mean, fish are not like, uh, known for their 
unique personalities. Let's put it that way. I mean, you don't have like a um, a favorite pet fish. I mean, you might, but it's pretty rare. Most fish are basically interchangeable with the next one, which means that they're they're. I mean, they don't have much of a consciousness under themselves. They're they're pretty much all the same, and they they don't have their own individual, you know, uh, mind. Uh, a school fish is a school fish. They they have group thinking, so that's kind of asleep. They're asleep at the wheel. They're just following the herd, following the, you know, following the the whole school of fish. So there's a natural unconsciousness or even subconsciousness to Pisces. And if you look at the house placement, it's the natural 12th house. And that's the, considered the, they often say the collective unconscious, but it's just as much as the individual unconscious or subconscious, you know, I mean, people like to distinguish, they say collective unconscious, but really there's no distinction in, in subconscious unconscious. That's why there's, um, when we get into like the psychic realms, if you're psychic, you're not just psychic in, within your own mind, you're psychic within the group mind, within the whole mind. And you get psychic, you know, it's a river, it's a flow, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ocean, it's, you're connected to the whole individual or whole, it makes no difference. That's the whole thing with the 12th house. There's no real boundaries. It's not like just the individual subconscious or the collective subconscious. It merges the individual with the collective. It's not, there's no differentiation there. It's all emerging, right? And there's this whole notion of like, if you study spirituality, uh, especially Indian, like um, Advaita Vedanta, they like to um, associate the ego with a salt doll. And that when you dip the salt doll in the ocean, it dissolves, right? And so that's sort of like the 12th house, right? We have this, we like to think we have this we're, we're unique individuals, right? We're all individual. We're all like me, 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 my identity. I'm this, I'm that, I'm, you know, I'm blah, 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 who cares, right? Um, but the higher reality, the spiritual reality is like that of the salt doll. You know, it appears very firm and hard and, and unique and individual until you start dipping it in the ocean and just big chunks of it start falling off, dissolving in the ocean. And that's the ego identity and that's the nature of the ocean that's the nature of pisces it's just dissolving everything and it's a complete and total loss but what we gain is the realization of the whole and that's why it, there's this polarity between being completely asleep at the wheel subconscious unconscious delusional fantasy and you get that with pisces or this incredibly um fertile realization of of the totality of of this this highest most sublime wisdom and truth of the universe of the nature of the whole thing like we have in this background i'm not really on the beach you know that i mean it's just a fake background but the ocean is the realization the pisces realization of the ultimate truth the whole um that is the the, the real dichotomy in pisces between delusion fantasy asleep at the wheel and being aware of this really enlightened wisdom truth of a whole of the ocean of the salt doll merging into the vast ocean they say enlightenment is when the wave realizes that it is the ocean itself right when we can realize we are life itself we are the embodiment of life. We're not so much individual people, individual beings, as we are life's longing to experience itself, right? That's the Piscean revel realization, revelation, right? And it and again, it comes at that with that polarity, the upper fish and the lower fish, right? Lower fish representing the um the delusion, the fantasy, the indulgence, the escapism, the alcohol, the drugs, the um, just complete. You talk to Pisces and they can just be, they're just like living in la-la land. They don't want to face reality. They refuse reality. They refute reality. They are living in a world of their own imagination. And on the other hand, the other fish, um, you know, they, they can potentially it's their potential not their guarantee um absolute you know 
um, you know, sort of automatic realization of the highest, but the potential within Pisces, at least the Pisces archetype is what we're talking about, is that, that very high realization, right, of the oneness of all of life, okay? So that's, that's the basic duality with Pisces, the, the sleep unconscious mind and the, the realized highly, you know, sublime truth and wisdom. And they, they often can confuse the two, you know, like it will just get be a big blur with, with Pisces. And that's where, that's why Pisces can really benefit from Virgo because Virgo has that ability to separate things, right? We're going to be like, no, 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 you got it all, you got it all wrong. This, this, that's that. Let's cut it up, slice it up, organize it. We're going to rearrange the whole thing, dude. You know, get it all right. That's Virgo. You know, Pisces is the one who's, you know, will mix uh, complete delusional nonsense with the highest spiritual truths. And they won't know which is which. So, unless they have some Virgo. We're just talking about archetypes. Anyway. Um, so yeah, spirituality is a natural connection with Pisces, um, wisdom, uh, obviously in the same line, same vein, um, sacrifice and loss, which is again, that, that the, the, the loss, the dissolution of being in the ocean, you're a salt doll and you're just getting dissolved until you're nothing, completely nothing lost in the ocean, complete, utter loss write it off, it's gone, it's lost. There's no retrieving it. Once the salt doll is melted, there's no getting it back. And so uh, as what else uh, comes along with that is, is a sense of martyrdom. Um, Pisces can be self-sacrificing, right? Um, there, it's just a natural expression of the Pisces archetype to give up themselves, to sacrifice themselves uh, for you know the greater good if you will i mean i don't know if they think about it as the greater good that's some that's a modern term well i don't know how modern it anyway uh martyrdom is a part of it creativity is also a huge part of um a huge uh aspect of, of pisces nature because um we're dealing with the subconscious mind and um when we draw from the subconscious mind we're we're accessing the, the creative spirit Right, that's the completion of the whole. Like, our minds are divided into conscious and subconscious, right? And the outright unconscious. Um, so, the completion of the conscious mind is to draw from the subconscious. And that's how we evolve we, by making the subconscious conscious or making the unconscious subconscious. You know, it goes unconscious, subconscious, conscious. It's this evolution, right, of becoming more conscious. And so it's a creative aspect when we can draw from the subconscious and make it conscious into creativity of whatever it is, artistic creativity, we call it art often, uh, but it's just creativity. I mean, having a baby is also a creative act, um, you know, creating anything, a business, um, any, you know, writing a book, um, making a video, whatever. It's all, it's all creative. If you're creating something, uh, if you're bringing life to something, then it's creative. And so Pisces have this really strong ability because their connection to the subconscious, they're living in their subconscious a lot of times. That's why they're so such weirdos a lot of times. I mean that in, in a good way. I don't mean any, I'm not, these are archetypes. So I can't, I'm not like, I don't have any favorite archetype. I mean, that's ridiculous. Our, our, our all archetypes uh, complete each other. So this is just part of a whole, one section of a whole, right? Okay, we're not talking about people here. So I don't have any, yeah, anyway. Uh, the Pisces can be incredibly generous, of course, because of this, this um, you know, the, the loss, you know, they're, they're constantly losing of themselves. Uh, of course they have, you know, the, it's, it's a very big energy, so they can, you know, they have a lot to give, but it's part of Pisces nature to, to lose themselves. So they can be very generous and give a lot. Um, they can be boundaryless. Right, just like the ocean has no boundaries, it's huge, it's endless, and you know, like the salt doll melting in the ocean, um, you just that that sense of loss and and um, you know, never-ending, you know, uh, 
like the ocean appear the ocean obviously has its limitations it's not never ending but it's as if it's never ending and therefore there's a sense of boundarylessness um you know pisces can just not honor boundaries they just don't have a sense of boundaries a lot of times um and they naturally have a very big energy uh pisces can be huge you know, um, if you think Pisces are a pushover, they might be very self-sacrificing, right? And they might um, have endless patience for, for your nonsense and just tolerate a whole bunch of stuff. But when they decide they've had enough, watch out because they can reflect whatever energy you throw at them and they can return it with this huge amount of force, right? They don't, they're not like the violent, they're not like Mars rule. They're not like, out, they're not going to be the ones who are quick to be in your face or, you know, try and, you know, run, a, run you, steamroll you over, although there, there can be, depending on the combination. We're talking about archetypes here. Um, but when they've had enough, I mean, it re they really can be like a tidal wave of, of force just overwhelming you. Um, what else? Uh, and yeah, again, they have this reflective quality where, um, you know, they can absorb so much energy so they can be like, they can take in a lot of stuff, but they can also reflect whatever you throw at them right back at, right back at you. And, and sometimes it can appear petty. Like sometimes you'll think like, like it's, it's like a tit for tat, like you do something and then they'll just do it right back at you. But it's just their kind of energy. I, I think it's just how they, their energy naturally uh, goes. Um, it's, probably not necessarily a pettiness as much of it as it is a just ability to reflect energy. Um, they can be very hidden and secretive um, naturally like any water sign because of the nature of water. That's a general nature of water where you look at the surface and you get a reflection of yourself. You're not seeing beneath the surface. Things can be hidden beneath the surface. So naturally things can be high, hidden in Pisces um, archetype. Uh, there can be a lot of secrets. Um, you know, all kinds of things, all the, all the watery, you know, all the watery things, sexuality, hidden, uh, you know, drugs or alcohol or hidden, but not necessarily that it could be anything really. Um, all sorts of hidden secrets. Uh, alter ego. Um, because of the, the ability for Pisces to be so in tune with the subconscious mind, they can put forward um, an alter ego. Um, that's why Pisces is often associated with acting and film uh, because of that ability to, to, to have this reflection that is different from the underneath, right? They can have a reflection that is a mask. And that's very natural for Pisces to just put forward something that is not necessarily who they are underneath. It's just a reflection. It's a, it's a mask. It's a surface appearance. They can be acting. Um, so they can portray this fantasy role, this fantasy identity. And that's an alter ego. So they can be actors and actresses very easily. And they can lie and steal and cheat if they want to. Not necessarily, not saying that they're bad people. That's all. That's a choice. Any sign can be dishonest. But if they want to, they can be very um, fake. I mean, it's not really, it is fake. I mean, it, it's what we'd call fake. It's an alter ego. It's an act. It's an act in order to lie, cheat, and steal. Right. And again, I'm not talking about that's not inherent with Pisces that they're necessarily dishonest. Again, that can be any sign, but it, it is a potential. It is uh, something that they can do if they want to. And it's, they can manipulate um, from that perspective, you know, putting forward this, this fake persona, this fake front. Um, any sort of like storytelling, fantasy, fiction, imagination. Again, the, the whole creative aspect is just different sides. We're, you know, just type, type, touching on. Um, very powerful psychic uh, and intuitive abilities. Again, because the subconscious is boundaryless. If you can tap in, if you're really in tune with your own subconscious, you can be in tune with all the, the subconscious, the collective subconscious. You can get in tune with other people's minds, right? Or the, the 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 flow of of you know the akashic record or whatever you know depends on 
on you know person's individual makeup but the the psychic ability is, is very strong and in, in uh pisces they're tapping into that that nether world right the spirit world that's the whole subconscious unconscious realm um and they can be partially in the other world themselves they can be very compassionate again this is coming this is you know having to do with that um um the ocean the ocean of spirit um it's when when you dissolve when you dissolve your own identity i mean naturally you're connecting with the eternal source of of love of truth of wisdom and so naturally this is a natural emanation of that realization of the compassion and Again, this is not, we're not talking about individuals. Sometimes Pisces, you know, hear these things and they think, oh, I'm a Pisces, so I must be the most spiritual out of everyone. No, I mean, that's, no, we're talking about potentials. We're talking about archetypes. We're not talking about individuals, right? I mean, I, I, I did um, a, a, an ast astrology reading for um, Alan Watts recently. And he's a Capricorn. He's a Capricorn son. And he doesn't have anything in Pisces. I, I can't, I don't think, I can't remember, but nothing major. Um, so, and he was incredibly wise. So this whole idea that if you have Pisces planets, if you have a bunch of Pisces things, you know, like you're automatically spiritual, you're automatically more evolved, it's garbage. It's, it's, it's like disgusting astrology. It's really like shit astrology. I'm sorry to be harsh. I mean, I'm not sorry, but like, it's garbage. It's, it's total nonsense. It's like, this is the worst part of astrology, you know, like saying that just because somebody had, it's like one twelfth of the world is the most spiritual. It doesn't even make sense. Like, it's just fucking stupid as shit. Like, just shut up. You're too stupid for astrology. Go away. Like, if you have that kind of thinking, like we're talking about one out of 12 archetypes. So no, if you have Pisces, you're not the most spiritually evolved person doesn't work that way that's just too stupid for words and this is where where i get pissed off i mean you know when pisces when not when astrology de delves into like dumb astrology it's it's just like it's worthy of criticism it's worthy of like you know an internet smackdown just smack you right through the internet right for being so stupid okay all right that's enough of that um where was i okay so yes they can be compassionate they can be empathic and again we're talking about um archetypes and potentials of piscean energy which we all have in our chart actually even if you don't have any planets in it you still have it occupying a house a house cusp potentially or if it's um uh intercepted it's still taking the bulk of a house or by whole sign so, is still occupying a whole house um and the ruler is still somewhere in your chart you know aspecting conjuncting you know what doing whatever it is you know um so yeah it's still there for everyone right so this applies to everyone okay i, I just i get it it's probably it's you know this is my astrology getting in the way of astrology but it's a pet peeve of mine it's not getting in the way but it's it's hanging up on when people do this like stupid astrology of like i'm a pisces therefore i embody all the astrology like the final sign of the astrology and they get all like high on their their bullshit and it's like it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean you're more evolved just because you have pisces sun moon ascendant whatever it doesn't that's wrong it's just wrong and bad it's wrong and bad so there you don't agree fight me Okay. All right. Uh, Pisces archetype is um, naturally empathic. It's not the only empathic sign, um, but again, that's you know very much the ability to connect to others and um, feel what others are are feeling. You know, it's that that boundarylessness, the the collective subconscious, if you will. Um, Pisces can also be confused and out of touch. Again, there's that, that, that dream world of fantasy being completely asleep versus being completely awake, you know, the lower and the higher fish. Um, they can turn to escapism of all kinds, 
most notoriously drugs and alcohol. That's classic uh, Pisces representation of the lower side of things, the lower fish. And they can be uh, along the same lines, completely delusional, even crazy, you know. Pisces can be insane, but so can any sign. Uh, but they're insane for the reason that, um, you know, they're just living in uh, fantasy land in uh, complete uh, delusion. Let's look at uh, the chart. Share my screen. And all right, we're looking at Whitney Houston's chart because she's a Pisces ascendant. Um, I did her reading this morning, but we're just looking at the houses here. So just ignore the planets. Um, and um, let's see what, um, this, this does apply um, to Pisces ascendant very strongly, but it's Pisces in, with any placement, with any planet, Pisces sun, Pisces moon, Pisces Venus, Pisces Mercury, all the planets and Pisces why? Because we can take any planet and look at it from that perspective and put it on the ascendant to understand how that planet is relating. And we get a chart that is, you know, uh, with let's just for this example, we'll take Whitney Houston, even though she's a Pisces ascendant, we could make a sun chart and it would be Leo on the ascendant. And then we would say, oh, in the second house is Virgo and the third house is Libra and the fourth house is Scorpio, blah, blah, blah. We could do a moon chart and it would be Aries and it would be like second house is Taurus, third house is um, Gemini, fourth house is Cancer, blah, blah, blah. Right? We could do that for every single planet. We could look at it through, from the Mars perspective and say, first house is Libra, second house is Scorpio, third house is uh, Sap. So you get it, right? Um, we're looking at the nature of Pisces and it's always gonna be Aries in the second house, uh, Taurus in the third house, Gemini in the fourth house, blah, 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 so forth and so on. So don't get hung up that this is only, a, only for Pisces ascendant. No, it's for Pisces anything, okay? Yes, Pisces ascendant, it's most clear, but it'll apply to Pisces sun, Pisces moon, Pisces Mars, Pisces Mercury, all of it. Okay. So all that I said applies to Pisces on the ascendant first house. Second house is in Aries, and this is really where it, it's, it's, it's interesting, so interesting, because second house deals with um, family and knowledge and assets and value, self-value, uh, self-worth, what they value in life. Um, and so here's Aries. And if you've ever come across a Pisces and talked to them for a while, you might realize that they are insanely, uh, insanely confident about their own abilities and their own value and their own, you know, they're like, you know, they rival Leos in, in many ways in, in their like, in their own self-esteem. They're like, um, and this is why I, I always have to rail against Pisces being not the most, um, you know, just because you have Pisces planets or ascendant or anything uh, does not mean make you automatically more spiritual because they always throw that out. I'm so spiritual. I'm more evolved than everyone. That's the Aries in the second house because it's dealing with the mind. It's dealing with their knowledge. It's dealing with their voice and it's dealing with their, their self-worth and their self, self uh, esteem, you know, what, both what they value and how they value themselves. And here it's Aries. It's all um, you know, Mars and fire and confidence, right? And that's why they're always like, I'm a Pisces. I'm the most spiritual automatically. Like, I'm just, I just am, you know, like all the Pisces, we all are like Pisces. You, we're the, just the, we're the final sign and we're just better than everyone. You hear that with Pisces and it's like, I, I, it makes me want to, you know, it makes me mad probably because I'm, I'm Scorpio ascendant and eighth house. So I have a lot of Mars and here's, you know, Mars is second. So it's like, you know, that Mars, okay. Not everyone gets mad about that, but I do. Um, and it was like, shut up. You're not like, you're just a Pisces delusional, like all the rest of them. Okay. That's not to say that Pisces cannot be very spiritual. Of course they can, but it's not a requirement to be highly spiritual. I've looked at tons of highly evolved charts and they're not all like Pisces, 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 right? They're not even all water, water, water. It could be anything. It could be a lot of earth. It could be anything. Anyway, um, in, they're insanely confident uh, with their own abilities. And I think the less evolved they are, the more they're sure they, that they're like the most evolved uh, when it comes to Pisces. They're, I just, I come across too many ridiculously um, insane Pisces that just, they're like, just, you know, and they'll say it so sweetly because that's the third house. Taurus, like ruled by Venus, 
they're just their their expression is beautiful and nice and like my third house is um capricorn so i'm like Rrr! and they're all like they'll say like oh i'm so evolved in all my past lives i've just spent you know working on my spirituality and now i'm just more evolved than all the gurus and more evolved than everyone and i'm so evolved that i don't have to do anything i'm just like shut the fuck up that's yeah that's the difference between me and and and, and them <laughs> uh what can i say i mean i'm just being real with you guys i mean okay so third house that's so that's aries second house the third house is like i said their expression it's very creative, very beautiful. Um, their their writing ability, their speaking ability. This is why one of the reasons they're so creative, right? And I'll give that to Pisces. I mean, they are. They're they're one of the. It's one of the most creatively powerful signs. Um, this um, Taurus third house also for voice. This is amazing because Taurus is the sign of voice. It's in the third house of expression. So like the, the, their, their ability to use their voice, to be sing-songy, to be expressive, really powerful, really strong, right? Um, beautiful expression. Um, yeah. Um, their fourth house is in Gemini and Pisces will have this funny thing where they'll, they'll just be like very restless at home. Uh, they'll be uh, re rearranging the, the furniture all the time. Um, they might like to sleep like all over the place, like throughout their house, you know, because they don't have any boundaries. So they're just like, they'll sleep in their bed, but then they'll also sleep on the couch and they might make a bed on the floor. Um, you never know where they're going to, you're going to find them next. Um, they're going to have like 10 different places they like to sit. It won't be one place. It'll be all over, right? And they'll be studying and they'll be reading and they'll be studying and they'll be like, musical chairs like and because they have no boundaries it's like you know you know one day they'll just be you know here the next minute they'll be there and, and then they'll be you know in in somebody's room you know like they'll be invading other people's space they'll they'll occupy the bathroom they'll occupy the kitchen they'll just be everywhere gemini all over the place and they'll be antsy and they you know gemini is short distance travel but it doesn't stop them from you know moving up and moving house like they'll move a lot um, you know, they can just be crazy in there with their homes, just like erratic, restless, and, and they'll love to study a lot at home, like reading books, multimedia, uh, communicating all over the place. And because, uh, Mercury is also ruling the seventh house. So then they'll also love entertaining at home. They're, they're going to want to have people, all kinds of people in their house, entertaining, you know, coming over for meals, hanging out, all that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. Um, also, second house is ruled by Mars. And ninth house is ruled by Mars. So we can't ignore that, that they're, you know, they're tying in the, the philosophy and religion and spirituality with their with their highly like overconfident um, Aries, uh, you know, knowledge, asset, self, mind. So like what they're confident about often has to do with spirituality philosophy um that sort of thing they're tying these two together these two houses uh second and ninth so they're supremely confident about um religion philosophy spirituality and all that and their knowledge base um as well as their assets you know they can be very um martian they can spend a lot because Aries is not a very conservative sign. They can spend a lot of money very quickly and erratically. All right, um, fifth house, Cancer. They can. They are. They are very compassionate people here. Uh, excellent with kids. Pisces make excellent parents. Excellent caretakers for children um, because this is the fifth house of of children. Also, creativity. Cancer and fifth house both are conducive to um, lots of creativity, right? Um, they're very caring, very nurturing, love to take care of things and, and be very, very creative and soft and, and motherly and all that, right? Um, yeah, fifth house is Leo, uh, sorry, sixth house, sorry. Sixth house is Leo. 
So this is naturally where they're sh they shine. Six houses is the house of service, right? So Pisces are very generous. They love to give. In fact, they need to give. And it's part of their, their personality of this, this giving, this service, right? Uh, the, this ability to, to serve others, to give selflessly. Um, although with Leo here, it's it maybe not selflessly. Maybe it's, there's some certain kind of ego when they give, but I mean, that's okay. I mean, it's, it's still a house of service and Leo is where they shine naturally. Um, so it's very important for, for Pisces to, to give and to serve others and also daily mundane life. Um, with Leo here, they can just make it, they just, they have this natural magical ability to, to make everything sort of, you know, the mundane reality shine magically, right? It's a very Pis Piscean quality to go throughout the day and everything's sort of like, it has this, this magical spiritual quality to it, right? We're washing the dishes and cleaning and cooking dinner and, and they'll just make it into something like um, really, um, big bigger than it than it might be for anyone else because uh of the leo presence in their sixth house this also helps them overcome enemies uh because sun is so big and powerful uh and they can be great mediators and um the uh intermediary intermediaries like solving other people's problems uh winning over their enemies um uh, through through leo through the sun through the power of this, this big bright you know shining light um so that's quite a nice aspect to have and that's why um six house pisces suns are, are are fairly unique you can get you can get like um an interesting idea about the the placements so like uh if you do like um six house pisces suns because it have it'll have a leo quality to it so there's a natural resonance resonance between six house pisces suns or fifth house Pisces moons or fourth house um, uh, Pisces uh, Mercury because we're looking at the rulership here. But anyway, I mean, there's something unique about that. Um, seventh house in Virgo, um, they can attract uh, you know, Mercury rules Virgo. So like partners that are, that are friends, you know, friendly partners, partners who are, are both their friend and, and their, their lover. Um, and also people who are um, quite critical of their, of the, their shortcomings. I mean, uh, that's always, we, we, we attract our opposites. That's not unique to Pisces, but uh, Virgo is very critical. So they can attract critical partners, but that, Inevitably is good because it's the lack of Pisces. It's what Pisces lacks is that ability of discernment, which is so strong with Virgo, the ability to um, discern truth from lies, fact from fiction, um, delusion from reality. Um, Virgo has that strong ability. And um, you know, they're very comfortable living with their partners because we have Mercury at the fourth and the seven, um, so they can naturally absorb their partner into their home, um, take them in. Also, they don't really have boundaries, so it's like, you know, they're not going to care because what's yours is theirs, and what's theirs is yours, and it's all theirs, and it's all yours, and, you know, it doesn't really matter to them, generally speaking. Um, Piscean nature, we're not talking about individuals. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Libra's in the eighth house. Uh, and that's really interesting, I think, because Libra is a sign of balance and justice and, and peace and, and balanced relationships. And the eighth house is a house of depth and crises and shared resources and sex. So they're very balanced about shared resources. And this is one of the things that makes them very generous because usually people are wanting to like, you know, they have like this, like, um, you know, especially when it comes to eighth house, it's a house of power and seeking power and dominance and unequal relationships. But here they want equality. Um, so they're very generous. They're, when the shared resources are really one of the most generous people on the planet, Pisces. You know, despite this, you know, I, I know I'm critical of, of their, their second house 
you know, Aries, you know, we're so spiritual. They really have some, some very evolved qualities that, that are really quite nice. And that's this, uh, one of them is that this um, Libra eighth house where they, they can really um, be fair and balanced with, within their, their, their um, in, the, in the area that other people seek power. Where other people, where others seek power, they seek balance and equality. Um, that's a really evolved quality. Um, Pisces can be superficial and eighth house is anything but superficial. So that's a nice polarity as well. They're bringing together something that is normally very su superficial and surface and bringing it into the depth. We also see that with uh, Scorpio, with Gemini in the eighth. That's where my son is, um, you know, and that forces me to go deep into things. Here, it's forcing Libra to go deep into things. Libra being among the most superficial of signs is going very deep. And so it's going deep into the occult. And because Libra also is, you know, cardinal air, so good with the intellect. Again, they can have excellent, profound understanding of these deep secret matters, the occult, um, hidden things, uh, anything having to do with, with secrecy, with psychology, with sex, with research. Uh, they can be excellent if they're so inclined to dig deep into those matters. Um, because of Libra in the eighth. And they're going to be very fair and balanced with, with their partners. Uh, yeah. Um, and very giving in sexual matters as well, because the Libra is fair and balanced. So anyway, Scorpio in the ninth. Now here they're taking the, all the, the Scorpionic things in very deep into religion and philosophy. So it's make the mixing of the occult and religion and philosophy and spirituality. So they're going to take they're going to take it not only very seriously. They're going to take spiritual matters, religious matters, philosophical matters very seriously, very deep. It's very important to them, right? Philosophy, religion, spirituality, higher knowledge, right? Higher wisdom, ninth house matters. Uh, it's very very deep and meaningful and mystical and they're going to bring in the, the occult into that whole thing and they're going to mix it together it's going to be one bag of spiritual mysticism occultism philosophy religion you know all of it it's it's going to be um a very important thing for them because again it's also second house so their 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 knowledge their assets they're going to value eighth and ninth house matters. They're gonna value scorpionic, they're gonna value ninth house matters in a very scorpionic way, in a very deep way, right? Um, extremely important for Pisces. And Jupiter is ruling the MC as it is ruling the ascendant. So their career is going to have a lot to do with their identity. They're gonna embody their career as teachers, as gurus, as philosophers, as you know, religious people, uh, could be very creative, um, you know, it could be anything Jupiterian involving like uh, travel, long distance, philosophy, high mindedness, you know, uh, or like sort of higher learning, higher knowledge, higher education, anything Jupiterian, um, anything benevolent, benefic, toward, you know, the goodness towards for, for humanity, celebration. Sagittarius is also loves to host a party. So, I mean, it could be on the lower end, something very um, just celebrate, celebratory. Um, you know, they could, they could be, um, I don't know, they could organize social events, social gatherings where people celebrate and do things like that. Anyway, it's going to be Jupiterian. Um, it could be money related because Jupiter uh, can deal with finances as well. Um, yeah, college, grad school, anything like that. Capricorn in the 11th house, uh, they're gonna be very selective with their, their groups and circles and people who they hang out with. Um, they're gonna be very, um, they're gonna use groups and networks to advance their career and to help with their career success. They're gonna be very um, ambitious in their uh, social circles, you know, using that for, to, gain worldly success and um they're going to be very mature in in who they let into their life 
you know, ideally, hopefully, um, at least with the Capricorn here, that that's what that suggests. And um, not large, I would not say large groups of friends, but more reserved, more carefully chosen friends and groups and networks and career success, um, things like that. Um, the 12th house is occupied by Aquarius. And this is also Saturn rule, but it's the more evolved Saturn, ideally, in, at least in the archetype. This is the, the Saturn that's, con that's concerned with the masses, with society, uh, with the big picture, with the awakened, enlightened society. And it's the 12th from the 12th. It's, it's the 12th. This is Pisces original house in, in the natural zodiac. And so what's interesting is when we look at the, um, the sign that the, the, the sign um, that the house naturally represents um, to represent it. So like Aries has Aries in the first house, but Taurus has Gemini in the second house. That's Taurus's natural house. Um, Gemini has Leo in the third house, right? So Gemini has Leo representing its third house. Cancer has um, Libra in the fourth house. Um, Leo has Sagittarius in the fifth house. Um, Virgo has Aquarius in the sixth house. And so each, and it keeps going like that. Each sign has um, one of the signs, uh, and these are all the yang signs, by the way. All the yang signs are the representative of the signs in their house. Um, Scorpio has Gemini in the third house, in the eighth house, right? So there's something unique about that. Um, and that's probably another video to talk about in, in its own. But um, Pisces has Aquarius representing its house. And so Aquarius, because Pisces' main concern is realization. I mean, its weakness is being asleep, being unconscious, being delusional, escapist tendencies, drugs and alcohol. But the higher end is spirituality, wisdom, the highest truth, right? And so it's utilizing Aquarius in its natural zodiac house. And so Aquarius is the 12th from the 12th. It represents, Aquarius do, does also represent a very high evolution of spiritual awareness because it's concerned about the whole world, right? Pis uh, Aquarius is the physical concern, the actual concern of the welfare of the masses, of everyone. That's what Aquarius represents. It, and the highest um, expression of Aquarius is, is the utopian civilization. It's not concerned with the individuality. It's concerned, what well, it is concerned with individuality is concerned with the individual, the awakened individual, the enlightened individual within society, within an awakened society. So it's beyond the individual. It's the individual plus all the other individuals, right? And there's something very unique about that in the 12th house of Pisces in that, um, this is a subconscious um, aspect of Pisces that, that um, it's, it's, it's concerning itself with, with awakening of the masses, right? And we're talking about, we're talking about Pisces. We, we, we say things like um, collective subconscious or collective unconscious or however you want to refer to it. And then we're getting in the actual 12th house, the sign that is concerned with the collective, with the collective, collective enlightenment, the utopian civilization. That's the highest realization of, of Aquarius. The, the awakened society, the awakened civilization, right? So we can see that. And it's in the 12th house, the house of the subconscious. So we're getting the collective Aquarius subconscious, 12th house, right? You see that? Aquarius represents the collective, 12th house is subconscious. So that's why we could say that Pisces represents collective subconscious or collective unconscious, however you want to term it, because Aquarius is the collective and the 12th house is the subconscious. So Pisces has the collective subconscious in the 12th house, right? So something like that. It, um, there's a very high motivation behind Pisces, it's Aquarius. 
Aquarius is the motivation, the hidden motivation behind Pisces, because it's in the 12th house. Right? So that's the very highest expression that uh, Pisces has, the 12th house. Right? Um, that's pretty much it, guys. Don't take anything I'm saying like in the wrong way. I, it's just my expression. I, I have I have a very strong expression because you know it's just the combination of all my all my my whole chart. Just you know, when I go through it, individual things, it's the whole thing. It gives me very strong expression. I'm not against any archetype. I'm just I, I passionately express things. Um, you know, especially specific things that that bother me, and that's one of the things. You know. The delusional nature of Pisces, thinking that they're more spiritual than everyone. It's, it's yeah, I mean, it's not true, obviously, but um, anyway, all the signs have their, their weaknesses and their strengths. And Pisces is, is, is an archetype that is one of 12, and it is as needed as any other. And they all complete each other. So, guys, that's pretty much it for Pisces. Um, and that rounds out the, um, my covering of the 12 Zodiac signs. So if you enjoy this content, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share. And if you want to book a reading, go to my website, macroastrology.com. And I will see you next time. All right. Thanks.